How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring along with me to talk about why I would still choose my Sony a7R 3 over the a7R 4 So let's jump right into it. So a while back, whenever I first got my Sony a7R 3 I made a video about why I chose to go for it versus the a7R 4 and I didn't really have actual basically comparison of using this much. That was like the first time that I was using it whenever I made that comparison. But now that I've had it for such a longer time, I kind of want to dive into why I would still choose this camera over the a7R 4 whether it comes down to the specs and prices and see if that will help you out to choose which whichever camera works best for you. Now the first thing and most obvious thing in reality for me is the price point difference. It just doesn't make sense to upgrade to the a7R4 to the a7R3 for what it is. It just didn't make sense for me still. It still wouldn't make sense for me to go get it. Right now you can get, um, this one's pretty fairly around like 2200 new. I know they came out with an a7R3 and a7R4A, which is like a, I don't know what it has new something so I mean that's something kind of fairly new but to me with the price point difference it just doesn't make sense to still go for the a7r4 for the things that you're getting with that said with what you're getting is you're just getting a lot more megapixels I think it's 61 versus the 42 and trust me 42 is more than enough most people that I know that shoot with the a7r4 shoot in raw but compress because they don't like the big files that it comes down with the a7r4 now with my a7r4 R3, I shoot raw uncompressed and it's still very good file management and everything. Yes, they are a little bit bigger, but in reality, it does just wonders with what it is when it comes down to the megapixel count with this one versus the a7R4. So that for me saves a lot more time and you don't have to compress anything and you get really good quality out of it. For me, the megapixel difference didn't really matter to me. I mean, I'm not cropping in that much with most of my photography anyway. Sometimes even in social media, you can do that. But now if you're on Twitter, like uh, I've been doing more, which I'll probably make a video about it later on. Um, it just doesn't make sense to be doing a a lot of cropping, I guess, if you will. So if you plan to do a lot of cropping, that could be a scenario for you if you wanna have the extra leverage. But other than that, it's not worth the money, in my opinion. No, no booping the tripod. <laughs> I got this little guy trying to boop the tripod. He's like, boop, boop. So he gets to be my model a lot of the times, but not really. But um, another point that I wanted to make with the a7R3 to the a7 IV, the body itself didn't really change. It's not like you get a flip out screen or anything like that, nothing new. I mean, they both have the flip up screen. So to me, that doesn't really make sense to change anything. I know the grip might be a little bit better, I guess they said. And I mean, every time that I've held an a7R4 with the, whether it's somebody else's or whenever I'm at a store just to kind of see what it feels like again, it doesn't really make so much sense to me. I added the battery grip for mine that I got um, as a gift. And literally, I mean, it's like some cheaper one that's like a newer one. It's done wonders. So, I mean, to me, I have grips to do whatever way I want to and I'm fine. I have this for extra security. So, like I said, for paying like a thousand dollars more basically on average, sometimes a little bit less because of sales or whatever, or a little bit more sometimes depending, um, it just doesn't make sense for me to really go ahead and spend that much money um, when it comes down to that. Now, a big, I guess, um, thing that I really appreciate from this camera that even the a7R4 has is just really how good it is with the buffering when it comes down to taking a lot of photos, even if you have the uh, uncompressed and everything like that. So to me, that's why I upgraded from my a7R2, like how I talked about in the, my previous video. So if you haven't seen that one, you're more than welcome to go check it out. I'll leave it down below. But with that said, I mean, it's just the speed of them are pretty fairly similar. I mean, there's minor differences that to me, like I said, it always gonna come down to the price point. You're not really getting much bang for your buck when it comes down to the a7R4 versus the three. So it just didn't really make sense for me to kind of change or go into something more, I guess, expensive when there wasn't much change. Like if it was an A7, let's say four, and it's like really fast and everything, I would like upgrade from my A7 III to that and have better color depth. Like if the A7 R4 had 10 bit internal, great. I would probably go for that better than the A7 R3 because I could use it for a good hybrid for photo and video. I use my hybrid A7 III basically for photo and video, but wouldn't hurt to kind of, I guess have that 
10-bit color since the a7 III doesn't have that, none of these do. So uh, if you're kind of thinking about it, I mean, the I would wait personally, I guess, to see if the a7 R5 is going to do something better or if the a7 IV is gonna be something that'll be more manageable for you to be a hybrid or whatever, but it all comes down to you. But for me, the reason why I still love this camera, I use this almost daily, to be honest. I use it for my tennis academy. I take a lot of photos there, which I'm gonna show you some of the examples of the photos that I've been taking lately. So you can kind of see what kind of photos you can take with this, whether it's at low light or sunlight, whatever you want to. I just think nobody's gonna notice if you have an a7 R3 or R4. Nobody's gonna go, oh my God, this person has a7r4 or 3 that's why i can tell in this photo because how great the pixels are nobody pixel peeps that much and social media compression doesn't really matter so if you're really not printing much of your stuff thank you for somebody being in my front door um if you're not really you know uh what's it called printing if you will all these photos or doing a lot of client work like that they need that extra megapixels uncompressed and everything like that i don't see the point of you getting it so that's just my thought and hopefully this tips kind of in comparison will kind of get a little bit more you know a decision for you to f figure out which one you want to go with i mean nothing too crazy today with a comparison but i just kind of wanted to make an update on this because i know i get asked a lot if I should have gone with the A7R4 or the, do I really like my A7R3 or should I get the A7R2? And in reality, it doesn't matter which ones you get as long as you're creating with them and you know how to use them well enough. For me, I am pretty much have this dialed in pretty well that I can just do whatever I want to really fast. I have all my custom buttons set up for what I need it to be fast and efficient every time that I go out to shoot and I go out to make videos or whatever I need to do when it comes down to these videos or from my social medias or from my businesses. So as long as you know what you're doing with your the camera body that you're using, doesn't matter what brand, that's all that matters eventually. But sometimes it is really nice to know like a little bit of comparison between the a7R3 or the A7R4 because it is basically the correlating cameras, but there is a big price difference with it. But that said, I mean, just kind of see what, what checks out your checklist. But the main thing for me is the price difference just didn't make sense. The megapixel difference wasn't for me. I didn't really need more. 41 or 42 is more than enough versus 61. Don't really care for anything else. The grip itself, I'm good with this one. I mean, I have the extra battery grip for better grip, if you will. And that's pretty much it because there's nothing much else that changed between those cameras, in my opinion, that really made it relevant for me to spend that much more money. For me, I'm just waiting for the A7 IV and hopefully it'll be announced soon because, you know, kind of tired of waiting, but who knows? We'll see what happens and We'll maybe get some uh, good old uh, updates on that soon and then I can see if I'm gonna get it and then make videos uh, with a camera for you guys to show you how it looks and see if you like it. But yeah, here are some photos that I've taken with this camera in case you wanted to see. If you wanna see more of them, you can follow me at my Instagram and Twitter is at Easy Tiger Creative for Instagram and for Twitter is Easy Tiger CC since apparently you can't write too much on um, Twitter usernames and whatnot, but definitely go check them out. But here are the photos for you. Hopefully you like the photos and hopefully it'll kind of help you decide what you want to do with your um, gear and what you want to get. But yeah, we'll see uh, what you decide. Definitely let me know what you decide and which one you prefer. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, share this video with a friend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.